So you want to start a skincare brand to share your beautiful creations with the world and possibly become the next international skincare superstar. One of the many things you've got to do when you sell your products is label them properly, legally. Unfortunately, regulator websites can be really confusing, making it easy for you to think you've done everything right when you actually haven't. What can feel like a small labeling mistake can get you in big trouble with national regulators and might even open you up to liability that could bankrupt your company. So in this video, I'm going to share some of the most common labeling mistakes I see and how to fix them. So you don't have to worry about getting a scary letter from the FDA about selling a misbranded product. Before we dive in, I need to emphasize that your local laws, the guidelines and regulations set out by the relevant regulatory body in the country or countries you are selling in are the final word on what is right for your business. Make sure you're doing what you need to do where you are selling, not simply copying what you've seen done elsewhere. Now, the basic gist of an ingredient list is that it needs to list all the ingredients in the product in descending order. That is, the one that's used the most is at the top, and the one that is used the least is at the bottom. The order below the 1% line doesn't matter, but we're not going to go into that today. Most labels get this more or less right, but I often see a mistake that betrays a lack of understanding of the ingredients being used, and that leads to an ingredient list that is missing a lot of essential, legally required information. To show you what I mean, let's look at this sample formulation for a simple emulsion. If we arrange these ingredients in descending order, we get this. Simple enough, yeah? But can you spot what's wrong with this ingredient list? To explain it, I've got a quick food metaphor. Say you order a quick, fast food burger for lunch. If you look up the ingredients, they can't just say bread, meat patty, ketchup, cheese, etc. They've got to disclose absolutely everything that's in that burger, and you'll quickly see there are ingredients in, say, the bun that you wouldn't have guessed from a general knowledge of what's usually used to make bread. For example, this bun includes soybean oil, an ingredient you probably would not have guessed was in bread, but you might need to avoid due to a dietary sensitivity. It's the same for cosmetics. If an ingredient has its own ingredients, you need to list that ingredients ingredients on your ingredient labels. At this rate, the word ingredient is going to sound like gibberish by the end of this video. Anyhow, to help you understand what I mean, let's go back to that sample ingredient list from earlier. This is an accurate ingredient list if you're thinking as a formulator about what you use to make the product. Unfortunately, just like saying bread, cheese, meat patty, this list is not accurate enough once you are selling to the public. Both Redemulse SCG, the emulsifier, and Optifin Plus, the preservative, are product names, not ingredient names. So they're like the bun for that burger. Both of these ingredients have their own ingredient lists called the INCI or INCI, and those component ingredients need to be in your ingredient list. You can get the full inkies for your ingredients from your suppliers. And if your suppliers don't provide this information on their product pages, I would recommend shopping elsewhere. The inky for Redemol's SCG is glycerol stearate and cetyryl alcohol and sodium stearyl lactylate. The inky for Optifin Plus is phenoxyethanol and caprylglycol and sorbic acid. Now, you might have seen these inky values included on ingredient lists this way. And while this is better, all the ingredients that are in the product are actually on the ingredient list now, this isn't quite correct either. The ingredient label shouldn't have any trade names on it, and it shouldn't have any ands either. But you can't just drop the trade name and the ands because now this ingredient list isn't in descending order. So here's what needs to happen. You've got to figure out how much of each ingredient's ingredient is in the overall formulation. Clear as mud? Don't worry, it's less complicated than it seems. Let's use the Redemol's SCG as an example. Redemol's SCG is approximately 55-65% to glycerol stearate, 20-30% to cetyryl alcohol, and 10-20% to sodium stearyl lactylate. If we take the middle of each range, that's 60, 25, and 15%, and that all adds up to 100%, so let's roll with that. Since the overall formulation contains 5% Redemol's SCG, that breaks down to 3% glycerol stearate, 1.25% cetyryl alcohol, and 0.75% sodium stearyl lactylate. 
With those values, we can now rearrange the ingredient list into descending order. Now let's do this again with the Optifin Plus. It is approximately 52.26% phenoxyethanol, 41.74% caprylaglycol, and 6% sorbic acid. We'll add those values to our list and then rearrange it. Now we've got everything on the ingredient list and in the right order. All that's left is a couple small changes to switch everything into Inky and meet Health Canada's labeling guidelines. You can see that this breaks up the compound ingredients and scatters the parts throughout the overall ingredient list, somewhat disguising the original compound ingredients. Now that you know this, keep an eye out for clusters of ingredients you recognize in commercial ingredient lists. You'll feel like Sherlock Holmes when you do. Of course, sorting out the ingredient list is just one part of selling safe, legally compliant skincare. Another place it is easy to go wrong is with essential oils. So make sure you watch this video next so you don't accidentally hurt yourself, a loved one, or a customer with improper essential oil use.